the second game and let's try and get the momentum and take it into the third game and let's just be there and have a strong, strong, strong finish. All right, we go to the media members now. Uh, so, uh, who will be the first one? Uh, let's, let's see. Hello, we can start. Go ahead. Open the mic and go ahead. Sorry, hello, Coach. Uh, this is Danny Wheeler um, from the Venus Sports Desk. Um, congratulations on this opportunity. Uh, the first question I have, have for you. Um, what are the things, whether tactically or personnel, others um, otherwise, are you seeking to do differently um, from your predecessor? Well, we, you know, we, we all, in terms of having an approach, we all have a different approach. No matter how we are, we could play the three-five-two, four-three-three. We could all play it very differently. We could get our wingers to come inside. We could get our fullbacks attacking, or we could do it the opposite way around. And we could look to have rotations. I'm very much about rotations. It's very, very difficult to change the personality of a team in the short term because we are looking for results and we're looking to just pick a team and a squad that's going to get us results. However, I do like to press really high. I do like to make sure that the team are attack-minded and we like to pass the ball around possession-based play. How much of that we can get out in the, in the short term is going to be down to the work that we do beforehand. But tactically, we're looking to press and counter-press and, um, and just hopefully, in the in the five phases of the game, try to dominate the opposition. All right. And just a follow, just a follow up. I know that you obviously with um, when women were in charge, you were a part of his backroom stuff, along with Warren um, Warren Barrett and Marion Gordon. Will you still be keeping that same back um, um, backroom stuff, or are there persons that you would want to at least bring at least for the next for the last six games of the of the campaign? Well. What we're, what we're trying to do is very, very early days. And we're, what we're trying to do is make sure that we speak to the players, speak to the staff, and I'll be holding a meeting actually tomorrow with, with all of that staff. Now, that staff has worked with us all the way through. It's important to not change too much and to keep the momentum going from the last game. But um, we've got to just wait and see what happens going forward. But um, yes, it's, uh, it's, it's not a bad stuff as it happens. It's, uh, you know, we're all together, we've worked together and we've made sure that we've uh, got a good working relationship with everybody that's involved. So let's try to um, move forward with that. That's good. All right, uh, let's go to Spencer. Spencer Darlington. Spencer, open your mic and let's go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon to you and good afternoon to Paul and uh, all others on this Zoom Thank press conference. You. Paul, my question is, depending on how the results pan out for the remainder of Jamaica's campaign in this um, qualification series, how prepared uh, would you be to accept the job on a full-time basis if that is offered by the JFF? Well, like you say, this is a results-based industry that we're in and the, the sheer nature of the beast that we're in is that you have to do well. Of course, if I'm offered the opportunity to leave Jamaica, it's been a dream of mine for as long as I've been involved with Jamaica. So, yes, of course, that would be something that I would seriously consider because there are a lot of, um, you know, opportunities around the world, but this one speaks the loudest for me, and it, and it always has done. So, um, yeah, I mean, listen, it's, it, it's more than just about the World Cup. It's about getting coaches in this country or in Jamaica better. It's about getting the boys and the girls coaches to up to the level of being, you know, really helping to coach the coaches. It, it reaches out far more than just qualifying for the World Cup. We want to get Jamaica to, to have world-class coaches that sprout from the island and then we can have world-class physios and world-class SNCs. And it's got more than just qualifying. So, yeah, I will be here for the long term and hope to develop lots more than just results on the island. We want to make sure that the, we get these practitioners into the very, to turn them to be the very best that they can be and get them into a world leading um, 
fraternity of um, our coaches. Thank you, Paul. All right, let's go to, thank you, Spencer. Let's go to Sports Down the Middle. Good afternoon, everyone. Good um, afternoon. Eddie from Sports Down the Middle. Congrats again, Mr. 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 Hall and the job. Thank you, thank you. My question is, in terms of player selection, what would be your policy okay. going forward? Well, like I said, the in, sh in the short term, we've got to pick a group of players who are going to win us a game of football. And that's the policy, you know, we've got to pick the best players who are going to win us games of football now. They might, that might change from Mexico to Costa Rica to Panama. However, that's the squad must be committed. That's one thing that I have always shown and I would, I would expect commitment from each and every player. And I would also expect that squad to be able to have the, the resilience and the materials to be able to beat a Mexico, a Panama, a Costa Rica, a Canada. It's really important that we have the players in, in the group who can go out and win as a game of football. And that's the policy in the short term. Probably in the long term, the medium and long term, we would look to try to get locally based players to get, um, how can I say, to get experience around the, the, the professionals that have come from England and from America um, and get them experience being around the, the older players. So, yeah, we we're looking at local players as well in the long term. But, yeah, that, it, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Cool. All right, let's. Thank you, sir. Let's move to Robert. Robert, let's hear you. Yes, yes. Yeah, good day, good day, everyone. And good day, good day again, coach, and congratulations on, on your appointment. My question to you is that, uh, you know, six games to go, seven points, how much pressure you think it will be on you as the, the coach to, to turn around the team questions at this time? Well, the, the pressure's there. Like, like I said earlier, I alluded to earlier, that they, it's a results-based industry. We know what we have to do. It's, there's no hiding away from the fact that we need to pick up points. I believe that we've got the players to be able to pick up those points and, and, and really strike fear into the rest of the CONCACAF group. I, fe I felt with the last game that we played, the momentum was starting to shift. I think that was because we had some of the fans inside of the stadium and they were such full of energy and we're going to really need everybody to be in the, in the right area, in the right space to push this team forward and, and yeah, really put us under pressure to get those results. Yes, the pressure is going to be there, but I really do believe that this group of players can, can respond to that pressure and, uh, and really make it difficult for teams to play, especially in Jamaica got four out of six games at home and we want to be able to make it a fortress and a difficult place for them to come like how they make it difficult for us to go there whenever we go to an away ground and people and people are just 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 a quick follow-up to that support how much how, 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 is it how important it is for us to get all the support that we need to to, to get us to 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 you know to even support this you know tell me about that it's vital, it's vital. If there's, you know, if we just need all the support that we can get and the positive vibes and the positive messages that we can get. Everything needs to be thrown at this last six games. It, it really did help us that we had those, that crowd in. Uh, I know for a fact it's, it helps us because when we qualified in 1998, in 97, sorry, it was vital that we had that crowd in there and, and we all knew it was part of the, the, the social fabric and socially it did so much for everybody and I feel that if we can get as many fans in that ground and as many fans messages, goodwill messages, it's going to lift the players and it's going to give us that, that boost that we need to go forward and they'll feel the love and uh, we just need to be able to get as many fans as we can. All right, Robert. Thank, thank you very much, Robert. Let's move now to Leighton Levy. Hello, Coach Hall. How are you doing? Congratulations yes. on the appointment. A couple of thank questions you. I have for you. Um, 
structurally and in terms of formation, the, the reggae boys started out a little bit shaky, but seem to be coming together in the last couple of matches that we probably should have won both of those. My concerns, and I suspect that they would be yours, is that we've scored six goals from the last from our eight matches. We seem to have a problem getting the ball to our forwards. Either the, 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 the route one um, approach doesn't necessarily work because as we saw with Mikel Antonio against Panama, all they did was put two centre backs on him and that, that it eliminated any opportunity. It took individual goals from him to score against the United States and of course El Salvador. How do we get the ball to the forwards? What, what are your plans to get the ball to the forwards? And of course to improve structurally that we have that structure, that formation that protects our goal because we already considered 10 goals from those eight matches. Yeah, good question. I think uh, what we need to obviously think about is a balance with everything. We need to be able to get the ball forward. Obviously, we've been using our full backs to get forward and get try to get crosses in. We've got, you know, we, as I think you're starting to see the team take some shape. The ball's going up to Mikel Antonio. It's starting to hold and he's starting to get some players to support him. And we're able to build and put a little bit more. I like to build play. I like to build play. I like to get the, the midfield players on the half turn playing forward. It's not necessarily a formation, it's a, it's a style. So whether you play 3 4 3, 3 5 2, 4 3 3, the players all know what style they're playing in. They want to be able to play, um, play the ball around corners, play off one and two touch, circulate the ball really quickly and make it difficult for people to, to get close to you. So it's really, really important that uh, we get the work into the players. Like I said, in the short term, it's, it's quite difficult to make that happen straight away. But there are things like reacting in the transition, winning the ball back quickly and getting the ball forward as much as we can uh, in, in a controlled manner. Uh, and, and really just being attacking base, an attacking based team that, for me, is the way how we do it. But in terms of formation, to answer the question, uh, it's not about formation, it's about style. And if we can get that style going, then we'll start to see players looking a, a lot more comfortable. I would bring you to my follow-up question. That style only works if we're able to maintain possession, you would agree. One of the biggest challenges we've had is that we, we constantly turn the ball over, especially in the, in the midfield or in our defensive third of the field. You know, how, do, how do we fix that? Can you fix that in the short term? I mean, yes. I mean, you, it's the way how you ask the players to play. So you're asking them to play a certain way. We have got players who can receive the ball and keep the ball in those deep line midfield areas. We've just got to make sure that we create situations for, for us to be able to not lose the ball and focus on that and really focus on keeping the ball. Sometimes you might have to... Depends. I mean, the, the opposition have the answer, don't they? I mean, if they come on a high press, you might have to go around it, or you might have to go over it. If they're, if they're central, if they, if they want to keep their team central, you go around the press. And if they go wide, you can go through the press. So it's about playing what's in front of you and answering what ploy the opposition brings to you. And what I want to do is create a little chat, think in place, and think on the spot, and understand what the opposition is doing and react to that quickly. Thank you very much, Nathan. Uh, so we move now to Mr. Scott. Go ahead, Mr. Scott. Which, which media house are you from, sir? Uh, yes, Livingston Scott here. Oh, Livy. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, coach. Uh, Livingston Scott here. So it's about utilizing the people around me, 
making sure that they, you know, if I've got any gaps, they can help fill those gaps, and making sure that we focus on getting three points. I'm not limited in my experience of getting three points. So we have to make sure that we go out, win the game, have our approach that's positive, and making sure we make it difficult for our opponents. It's, yes, you could say inexperienced, but everybody was inexperienced at one point. So we have to make sure that we go and, and be confident, uh, as I am, uh, and be confident in, in myself as well. Um, one other thing, Coach, Leon. Leon hasn't put his best far in the qualifiers. We know he has been beset by injuries. Any special plans for him to try and get him up to the standard we know he can perform? And also, any other plans for Mikel? He has been flying. Any other consideration for Mikel and Tony as well? Leon and Mikel? Well, Mikel's been, you know, Mikel's, he's in full in the international. I think he's really got a bit between his teeth in terms of wanting to score, wanting to do well for the country. And the Mikel Antonio, who's fit, raring to go and focused, is a world-class player, as you can see every week in the Premier League. With, with Leon, I was a winger myself, as well as a forward, and it's about just getting him the ball all the time. Really making sure that he can get the ball, really making him feel confident that he could, you know, if he, if he doesn't have a particularly great moment, no problem, that's gone. Don't live in the past. Let's get in the future. Let's make sure that we focus on the next one, the next one, because what we're dealing with is a world-class player. And even world-class players have times when they're not producing the goods. So maybe we could set some goals for Leon in games. Uh, maybe we could get Leon the ball all of the time and just make sure that he, he feels confident about taking people on. If, if he takes somebody on nine times out of ten and he gets rubbed nine times or he, cr he crosses the ball on the tenth time to be able to win us the game, that's all anybody's going to worry about and, and think about and then people will be talking about. It's about instilling confidence into these guys and really just believing in them and showing them that we believe in them. Thank you, sir. All right, let's that's move. Thank you, started. All right, let's... We're going to move now to Sanjay Miles from The Observer. Sanjay? Greetings, uh, greetings, Coach. Greetings, Sanjay. Coach, uh, kind of a follow up to Leighton's question about um, kicking the ball. And any thoughts about getting more creative players in this field? Uh, because kicking the ball has been one of our issues. As, as, as Leighton mentioned, we turn over the ball a lot. Um, and, and also, are you thinking about bringing in any new faces um, to, the, to the campaign? Well, I mean, the, the, uh, let me ask you a second question first. The, the, that's what the Peru game is for. We want to see what we've got. Uh, and we want to see you know, what quality that we've got with, with certain individuals in certain positions. And we can use that as a game, as a prep game, to see what, you know, under pressure in, 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 the, in the fire how those players can react to me, what they would like work like with what I want to happen. Um, the first question is, it's, it's about focus for me. Yes, you, you know, it, you, could, you could change players, you could do whatever. And with that, I mean, the Mexico game is really starting now. So we're starting to focus on which players that we can call. It's really an open, it's really an open field for who we pick in midfield. So it's about making sure that we, even if we have those players, it's about making sure that those players prepare themselves right and try not to lose the ball, try not to, to, to give up possession, even though that some, sometimes they might not have looked like the greatest players in the world. Again, we need to pick ourselves a team that's going to win us the game of football. And sometimes we may need to win a battle in the field and then bring up the players who can play. So, there's lots of different permutations that you can use, but we're, yeah, we're, we're still looking for, for, for players that can improve us in any position, really. Can I have another question? Mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead, Sanjay, yes. Okay, um, so coach, uh, how difficult uh, decision was it for you to take up this job, um, given the, 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 the friendship that you have with the former coach? 
Yeah, it's the, it was different. But I mean, it's 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 bittersweet if I'm being brutally honest. Um, Theodore is a, a good friend and a good colleague and uh, an ex teammate that I had, and we've ever achieved some great things together. So it was it was a difficult thing, yet very difficult to take that position. We've exchanged um, messages and spoken about it, and I can assure you that he is behind us, and he he will be cheering us on, and uh, he gives us his best wishes. And uh, you know I have to commend him for that because uh, it, it still must be as it would be for anybody else, quite raw still. And, um, but we have to continue the good work that he's, he, he's done and uh, that's what I will be telling the players we have to continue it, it's the nature of the beast but we have to continue the good work that, um, that's been done by Theodore and try to bring this, this situation and try to bring it home Thank you Sanjay uh, Let's move to Joe Nelson Mr Nelson, your time Um Coach, well, um, again, like everybody said, um, congratulations. Uh, this might be a little preemptive or premature, but um, at the moment, um, you're, as you are the interim coach now, but you talk about culture. How do you plan to change the culture of Jamaican football? Well, I think I was in the, the lucky position of seeing Wales because I've, I've done my pro license with Wales. So I was in the lucky position of seeing Wales go from where we were in you know, 40th, 60th in the world into the top 10. And they changed it by everybody focusing on having a way of playing football in Wales. That's the way how they wanted to do it. I would love to be able to get a style of play, introduce a style of play to Jamaica that we can get the youngsters to understand that from the younger age groups, to understand the, the, the pattern of play, the way how we go about things and, and get them to be really produced world class players and, and to, to, to do that we have to make sure that we focus on the culture so the, the, the team must reflect the culture of the people. We must play in, in quite a smooth, flamboyant way that looks like we're dancing to music, all of that type of thing. That's the culture that we want, and we must not just rely on, on our, uh, our athletic ability. We must create thinking players. We must create players who can, who can receive balls and, and, and pass balls and, and really think, and psychologically strong and resilient players. And that's going to take a long time, but we must start with the, with the young ones and try to instill it. And, and then if somebody's age 10, that's a 10 year journey by the time we get to the national team. But hopefully if we start with the young boys and girls, we can get this Jamaica way um, on the way and, and hopefully affect the culture of the young players. Oh. Does that answer your question? Um, it from sort of where but, um, I, I, all right, I guess you are not here. I don't know if you live here or you live abroad, but, but it will, how do you plan to, to make it, it trickle, down, uh, trickle down from you to the system that, that we have? Here. So, it, again, it's, it's about everybody working together, getting around the table and really working on what is the best thing for Jamaican football. And that is, that is more than just myself, it's the technical director, it's the JFF, it's the schools, it's the local, it's the professional teams, and it's about making sure that we all can get round the table, because the answers will be there. It's about everybody coming round the table and coming to, a, a, I suppose, an agreement about how we can take this game forward and become world class. It's, it, like I said, it, it starts with the younger ones if we can get them and get them into a way of playing football and a way of behaving and a way of carrying themselves and a, and a way of developing. You know, we are, for me, I believe that we have to develop the youngsters, win those or draw and utilise the, the options to develop the youngsters. But like I said, everybody needs to sit around the table and, and try to improve with what the, the, the status quo is at the moment. 
All right, Coach, one final thing. Um, what do you think of the quality of the local game? Jamaica, I don't know if you watch how many local games you have watched. I mean, at the local level, the Premier League that we have out here and all of that. Um, and the local players. So the local game and the local players. And what are your views for local players in your program, in your system? Do you have any? <laughs> there's many. I mean, there's, there's lots of young players um, and, and local players that can come in and, and do a job. And I mean, that's what uh, the, the Peru game is, is probably pointing towards. I think it's important that we utilise. I mean, before we came to Jamaica back in, in 1996, we probably knew nothing of the players, but then we probably saw the greatest players that we'd ever seen in uh, you know, Walter Boyd and Andy Lowe, the other Whitmore, and, and there is so much talent on the island, so much talent in these leagues. It's about looking at it and trying to develop this, this talent and um, trying to really give it a pathway and offer it, offer it a pathway into our national program. Thank you, Joe. All right. Uh, I don't... Mr. Wheeler, I see your hand still up. Do you intend to ask another question? Yes, I, yes, I do, Mr. Bailey. All right, one, 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 one quick one, because we have quite a few other people who, who want to yeah, ask. Just one, one, one quick one for, for, for you, Coach Hall. Regarding the January 20th friendly uh, against Peru, that will be your, your first game in charge. Given that it's outside of an international window, um, international FIFA international window, what are the kind of players that you're hoping to assemble for that game? Um, um, will that come, how that will be beneficial to us as we prepare for Mexico? Um, and will those players involve players that are in their preseasons, for example, persons that were playing in the MLS, for example, Andre Blake, Corey Burke, and those kind of players? Well, yes, I mean, we're, we're, we'll try to get the players who are available or who are out of competition uh, and who's available to us. What we, what we want to do is have a look at these players against some, some quality opposition. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, we would have to play. We would have to look at the players who are out of competition because the, the players in Europe would probably not be able to be released that early for, for that particular game because they have their own professional requirements. Thank you, sir. Let's move back to Sanjay. He has one more question. Sanjay? All right. Uh, the Formula Sport. Talk to us, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Mr. Um, Bailey. Thanks very much. Um, first of all, I want to sincerely wish Coach Paul Hall all the best going forward with the Nationals. Thank you. Um, the first question. Because I have just a couple of quick questions. Um, he mentioned about new players. Not, not asking him to mention names, but is there any particular positions that he would like to improve? Uh, yes, I, I would like to improve every position. Um, particular positions, I mean, it just depends how people react to the way how I want them to play. And that means that I would have to get involved with that team and they would have to adopt the principles that I would want them to, 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 to use and, and to apply. So, yes, there are positions in, on the pitch that we would want to improve. But I would want all the positions on the pitch to improve. I want to get the maximum out of every position that I could. Okay. And, uh, you know, I think it's a fair point to say that given the talented pool of players that we have had, the team has underperformed. What, you know, are the main issues that you would say is mainly responsible for this underperformance? Well, uh, like I say, I mean, it's, it's a, that's a difficult, it's a good question, but it's a difficult one to, to answer. Um, I think going forward, we have to put the players under the pressure of what this is. It's a, it's a cause. I think what we have to get the players to understand it is a cause, and the cause is bigger than all of us. Um, and that's the bottom line. So we 
have to get the players to perform and, and relax a little bit. Uh, if I if I'm going to answer the question, probably we haven't played by being relaxed. We we just haven't relaxed and played and shown what we really can do. Because if you see what these players can do in training, then you you, you wouldn't be you wouldn't have any concerns. So my job is to get those players to relax and, and just play a little bit more confidently and, and trust themselves and trust each other. And I think maybe we could be accused of not trusting ourselves and, and playing as freely as possible. So, but the pressure is big, but you know, we, we put ourselves in the position of being under pressure. So um, hopefully we can play a little bit more freely. And finally, we know that you know you're still working with Queen's Park Rangers, Mr. Hart, right? What mm -hmm. assurances can the nation have, right? That Jamaica will not be affected by your other role across the pond. Well, Jamaica hasn't been affected since I've been here, and I would never have taken the position if Jamaica would have been affected. I love Jamaica too much to to make Jamaica be affected. QPR have given me their full support um, in, in in what I'm doing, and they've been fantastic in the way how they've supported me until now, and they continue to offer their support and um, help me in any way that I can and that, that I would ever ask for. So they've been fully supportive of, um, of, of this uh, opportunity. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, Th thank you very much. Let's move now to Kevian Minzi. One question. We have three more. We want to take three more questions, and and, and that's it. Let's Kevian. Let's hear you. Mr. Minzi. Let's move to. Leighton, one more time. Leighton? Yeah, what? okay. Back again. You answered one of my questions I wanted to ask earlier about the, the QPR thing. But you, you, earlier you spoke about um, the developing a national philosophy, something that I've actually asked about many, many years, for many, many years. And the idea that people believe that the grassroots level starts in high school. The grassroots actually starts before you get to 10 years old. Um, Sir Paul, you, you grew up in a system where you've seen the effectiveness of that in the UK. How can you get the thinking of Jamaican, the Jamaican stakeholders, those specifically involved in football, to understand that it requires a, a, a comprehensive overhaul of how we, how we approach development of football in Jamaica for you to get what you desire is in, term, in terms of the culture of, of football that we need to play and develop a national philosophy? Well, uh, the, the only way you can try to do that is to try to persuade and try to have conversations and try to show proof where he's worked. I mean, we've got we've had Ricardo Gardner, um, so many players that have left the island um, who have gone on to become really good players. Um, I think you've got to have these conversations of where it works and uh, and really try to persuade people that it will it will work, but it takes years to work. If you look at the successful countries that are all in the top 10, they've all had a, how can we say, they've all had an overhaul of what they believed in. If you look at Spain, if you look at Holland, you look at uh, Germany, you look at England, you look at Belgium, all these teams have had a major overhaul of what they were doing and what they did believe in. And they went about the world and took examples from everywhere else and they instilled it into their own country. And now many of those teams are in the top 10, of which Belgium um, and specifically Wales. If you look at the Wales model, Wales is so much like Jamaica, it's untrue. It's got 3.1 million people. It's a very small country and they're full of pride and they wanted to just get their own identity and they just said, let's have our own identity. And these are the conversations that we need to have because it's a madman who continues to think that he's gonna get changed if he keeps doing the same thing. But if you try something new, now you might be able to get change. 
and the conversations that we have and the cohesion and the togetherness and the fact that we all want to just go in a single direction which is to improve and to become world class yes we may disagree and yes we might not agree on everything but at least we can decide that we need you know if you go and play against Belgium they play in a certain way Brazil play in a certain way Argentina all the top teams in the world have an identity that they that is the reason why they're first class they don't ever change their formation or anything else you know that they're playing you know that you're playing against England you know you're playing against Germany because they've got their characteristics and they use their characteristics to the best of their ability so I hope we can really work together with everybody and, and, and work and have you know we've got the athletes we've got the footballers just got to get them together and, and really get them into a style of play that's recognisable in the world so people can say that's regular right there you know yeah well, thanks I'm, I'm boxer I'm boxer sir sir Erlbin. sorry about that my microphone was not working alright one quick one yeah good afternoon everyone um, congratulations again to Paul on and assuming this um, position. Um, I wish you all the best in going forward. Now, two questions, quick questions. Um, we had players in the in in the setup like an Ethan Pinnock, Jamal Lowe, Daniel Johnson, and Michael Hector. Do you have any um, thoughts of bringing back these players, and will there be any players that would be left out going forward? Well, like I said, it, it would be remiss of me to to think that oh, I'm just going to leave somebody out, or I'm going to, or I'm just going to recruit somebody straight away. It's a, it, the Mexico game starts now, and without giving anything away, it's an open it's, it's an open book. I can't, I would never like to say that I would take somebody out at the start without speaking to them and without seeing you know their commitment levels. And, Etc. Etc. So the, the door is open. The door is wide open. Um, I just want a group of players who can win us a game of football and take us to the World Cup. So everybody's included, and then obviously it will whittle down to a group of whatever, and then um, we'll, we'll try to go forward and, and try to win some games. Thank you, Kevin. Let's go to Mr. Blake. You have been. Buzzing all along, let's hear you. Ohini Blake. Thank you, Mr. Billy. Um, your, 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 your volume is low, Mr. Blake. Your, your... Coach Hall, uh, congratulations on your appointment. Um, I also wish you to take this opportunity behalf of Reggae Boys Commentary to wish Coach Whitmore all the best in his future endeavors and thank him for his many years of service. Uh, I have just have three questions very quick. The first um, is an open question, Coach Hall. When you jumped on the plane in 1996 to come to Jamaica, did you ever dream that you would be in this position? And is, is this a fulfillment of a dream that you had and how do you feel personally? That's the first question, and then I have two footballing questions. Yeah, yes, um, it's, a, it's a dream. I mean, it was a dream to be getting on the plane, to be coming to Jamaica to play. Um, my parents, my grandparents, all my family, it's playing for Jamaica and representing Jamaica and those colours, seeing the national anthem. It's really changed my life and my family's life. And um, it, it, it fills me with pride to be able to serve the country. And, and lead the country and, and again achieve or try to achieve the uh, the aspirations and the aims of both the JFF, the country, and the people. So yeah, it makes me, it fills me with pride and um, an honour, and I'm really, really happy to be to be here. But it is bittersweet because for, for obvious reasons. And the, the the second of the three questions is related to something that we have been discussing amongst us bloggers. Fans, the need for a camp and not simply a friendly match because a number of our players would not have been active uh, since November when it comes to January. What are your views on the need for maybe a 
one week or two week camp, similar to what we had prior to the Gold Cup, to get those players ready for the Peru game? Well, yes, it's, it's difficult. I mean, with what we're doing now, we've been speaking about this today, actually, and we are trying to get uh, some things in place so that we can periodise those players, uh, periodise their their their, their, their season, their off season, so to speak, so that they can have a level of fitness and get a base level of fitness. So yes, we are addressing that, and it is important that those players continue to tick over because uh, you know the, the Panama game, sorry, the, the Peru game, is important for us to be able to hit the floor running. So yes, we've got we've got operations in place to address that. Okay, and, and finally. Um it's a two-part question. One, um, have you brought along some backroom staff in terms of scouting? Because I know you're in the UK and there's, for example, our schoolboy football being played now. And the, the caveat to that, or part B, is how do you react to the number of um, activities for like, the last two weeks of players in the United Can, can, this is the last question, Hoi, we, we have to move on from this. Okay, let's, let's hear it, Paul. All right. Um, yes, it's always good to have interest from, from players and especially from the top clubs to get them in the Uh, let's go to uh, Crystal Davis in London. Crystal. Good day, everyone. Um, we gave you a sample sample. Congratulations on your new appointment. Hello. And yes, I'm okay. How are you? I'm not bad. Amazing. Just touching on what you said in regards to insanity, you know, the idea of doing mm. something and getting the same outcome. Now, you've seen the games from a different perspective. experience. I think uh, the fact that we we really do have to just attack this assignment, that for me is, is going to be really invaluable. I think sometimes, like I said, I alluded to earlier, we've probably been guilty of probably not attacking the game straight away. And I would love to be able to, but you know, that's my personality. I love to attack. So, you know, there's been lots of invaluable experiences. But um, the fact that I can say to the players, especially the, the guys coming from England, that this is a totally different style of football, and the fact that we've been able to do that has been able to give us momentum. And probably seen that in the last couple of games that we probably should have won. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Jamie Jones, Manchester United. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, just touching on what you said in regards to 
That's the la- you're the you're the final final piece of the puzzle. Let's hear it. That's about 50 minutes. Um, well, if the journalists can't get a bite right from that, uh, they, they won't get it any, any other time. I'm, I'm sorry. All right, so... Oh, oh, yes, oh, sir. Sorry, excuse me. Um, I'd just like to say um, thank, thank you really to uh, Fitzroy Simpson and his B2 Sports Group for uh, getting me into this position, really, and, to, and for supporting my, my time here. I mean, he's been very influential in, uh, in, in, in my involvement in this, and we, we step, we're, even though we're good friends, we're good colleagues as well. So I just wanted to say that. All right, there you go. All right, thank you, Paul, for being with us. Uh, normally, this wouldn't go on for so long, but um, a lot of information there. Uh, thanks to all the journalists who, who joined us. And, um, you know, we want to, 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 to say thanks for. for, for you know, being around us, Paul, I mean, you know, we know you, you have a long history in Jamaica, um, good history, and uh, we hope that this history will, you know, carry us forward. Uh, we want to ensure that um, Jamaica does well, and, and, and certainly that's why the, the Federation has come to you, because you are closer to the players. Uh, you know the players, you have been with them now for, for six months. All right, so we wish you all the best. All right. Um, the, the, we will want to have a press conference tomorrow again, and just, just so, because everybody on, on screen. We want to speak with Mr. Vin Blaine tomorrow. He is the new head coach for the, uh, for the ladies. So I'll send the link later on or tomorrow morning. I'll tell you the time, and um, hopefully we can have just as many people uh, asking Mr. Blaine questions about ladies. Thanks again, Paul. Thanks to everybody. Thank you. Thank you.